Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Jesse Bush. I run the conversations program for the SAG Foundation. Again, welcome to our in-house audience. And at this time, I'd also like to welcome our online audience. Um, we're thrilled to have TNT's The Closer here tonight. We're also thrilled to have a fantastic new moderator, new to the foundation um, tonight. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to the editor-in-chief of TV Guide magazine, Deborah Birnbaum. So excited to be here tonight. I honestly, you know, all TV shows are my favorite children, but this is kind of one of my favorites. So I'm really thrilled to be here tonight. Let's bring out our panelists, shall we? Creator and executive producer James Duff. <laughs> the long suffering Fritz Howard, John Tenney. Mm. Mm. The closer herself, Brenda Lee Johnson, Kira Sedgwick. Loyal Deputy Sergeant Gabriel Corey Reynolds. The techie with the heart, Buzz Watson, Philip Keen. <laughs> Lieutenant Tao, who you just saw in a fantastic episode, Michael Paul Chan. <laughs> Detective Sanchez, Raymond Cruz. <laughs> She plays Captain Raider and will soon star in Major Crimes, Mary McDonnell. <laughs> and one of the funniest buddy comedies I know, Lieutenant Flynn, Tony Dennison, and Lieutenant Provence and G.W. Bailey. <laughs> well, I wanted to start out by talking a little bit about the episode. <laughs> Oh, GW. I said, I said GW. Did it not? She said GW. I, thank you. I would not forget GW. One more round of applause for GW. Who is that? I thought it was someone else. Thank you. All right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the episode that we just saw, which was one of the most heartbreaking. Um, how, how do you act that episode out and then shake it off? For anyone who wants to talk about it. I think my Michael, why don't you start out talking about it? Um, my wife and I tried to watch it at home, and we couldn't. Um, <laughs> we all got pissed. pissed. It, was, um, it was a very emotional night. We couldn't watch it. We, we, had, we had to uh, go to separate rooms and try to watch it. And then even then, it was like, there was a lot of yelling going back and forth. So, <laughs> it, yeah, it's a very difficult episode. I mean, we were dealing with um, something that was terribly tragic. Um, and, we'd, and I was dealing with um, the idea of, because I am a father, and, and that's very personal. Um, and I have a son. Uh, he's older now, but, um, and that's, um, yeah, yeah it, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it, it, it's difficult. You know, the other thing I noticed in the episode, too, we were sitting in the back of the room, and there were some moments of humor that you really used to deflect the tension. How important is that for the show when you're writing it? Uh, it's vital. Because you can't go to a dark place like this. This is a really, really dark place, a primarily dark place. And uh, when you go to a really, really dark place like that, bring a flashlight. And that's what the humor is for. I mean, we, we sprinkle it out throughout the show. And, and uh, I think it helps. Because otherwise, the depth of the human depravity is so awful, and yet that's what murder is. <laughs> you know, murder is, is and it's a, it's a very human response, but it is a depraved response. And we want to show that depravity, but it would be very difficult to do without leavening it a little bit with humor. And so we do that, and it's also true to the character of police officers. I mean, if you hang around them for any length of time, you go to a crime scene, you, you might mistake yourself for having just stumbled onto um, a hastily composed goodbye party. Uh, and, uh, and that's just the way it is, because it's, it's their work life. And they joke during their work life, like actors joke behind uh, the scenery when they're waiting to go on sometimes, depending on where they studied. <laughs> oh 
police officers will <laughs> will to I was once told off, but for saying I was doing treble in the seagull when I was young, and I was once told off by the girl who played Masha by saying hello to her when I made my exit. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm in character. Uh, and. Uh, so we, we, we like to, like, and we'll put laughter in dangerous moments, too. I mean, we'll put a laugh, like you notice, like in some of the darker interviews, Kevin is suddenly there, and you're in the middle of a family argument. And, and it allows you, I think, oh, there's one of the actors from the episode tonight. Our guest cast also, that's one of the other things, is that our guest cast is so amazing. What we ask of them and what they provide every week is just so amazing. Anyway, the laughter is, I mean, the humor is very deliberately placed. We are serious about it. The other thing I really noticed about this episode, too, is that it's got such a distinct visual style, which I think has really come to define your show. The shot of the boy being fished out of the pool was just, just so heartbreaking. How important is that visual technology when you're putting the show together? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's very important. We try to make every episode of The Closer look like a little feature but I want to point something out because there was a I was I watched it with you guys in the back and there was like a collective gasp really when you went under the water and you saw what was going on and I think it's worth mentioning that there was not one shot fired there was not one drop of blood in this episode and the closer really does try to focus on not glamorizing violence most of the time. I mean, there, we do have gunfights, we do get shot at, you do go to a morgue, you do see blood, but we try to show the consequences of violence. And I was very, I was very proud of, of that, that visual image. And I was also very proud of the audience, actually, for gasping. It's, it's, it's great well to see you guys gasp without like having 50 cars drive off a cliff and 30 people saw it. It seemed like a really human moment and I really appreciated it. And it's, it's very important, those kind of visual, those kind of visual. Uh, I think one of the other reasons the show stands out so much is what a strong ensemble it is. You know, and I was thinking that, you know, Brenda almost used yeah. Brenda almost uses all of the, she's almost like a conductor leading an orchestra, using all of the different detectives for different purposes when it suits her needs as she's playing out the interviews. So, I, you know, I was thinking about going down the line with each of you talking about what your individual strengths are as a character and then as an actor, what you bring to each of the cases as it goes along. You, you seem to be next. <laughs> The long suffering, Fritz Howard. I like that. I like. Did you like that intro? I like that intro. The long suffering. Um, it's funny because I don't feel like I've suffered at all. Oh. <laughs> um, no, I actually, I, I don't think I've suffered, but yeah, I put up with a lot. Um, I, uh, well. What was the question? <laughs> what role do you think your character plays? Well, when I, I've always, I've always seen my my role as, uh, you know, my piece of the whole pie is uh, the personal side, the personal life, the sort of the, the kitchen sink drama. The, the, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm involved in the cases, but I've always felt that Fritz was there to show the personal side of Brenda, um, which, from an acting's point of view, I mean, I, I'm, I feel. Very happy about that because those are the most fun scenes for me to play. Um, I'd rather, uh, you know, I, I like all those scenes in our bungalow or duplex with the kitchen, and the bedroom, <laughs> or the car. Um, but uh, so I, I just enjoy the that that human element that uh, sort of step away from the whole work life, which is which is really nice. And uh, and I also just love the dynamic that. James is, and all the writers have created between these two, how I view it as, as two addicts, one in recovery and one in denial. And it's sort of <laughs> nice. It's a nice, uh, it makes a nice, uh, it's a nice place for drama. Well, and TNT knows drama. So I hear. <laughs> Um, you know, it's actually really, it's an interesting way to look at it. I hadn't ever really thought about it as the ensemble, as, you know, something that she, you know, shows different sides of her and she uses for, you know, different um, uses to her advantage, uh, their strengths um, and sometimes their weaknesses. Um, uh, so I, I think it would take a really long time for me to go through everybody, but um, I... Uh, 
I welcome and, and feel so honored to be working with such amazing actors who bring so much to the table every scene that they're in. And especially with me because I always can, you know, play with what I'm given. And I do think that they are all reflections in some ways of her different sides of her personality. I mean, she goes, Corey is her, you know, go-to guy, guy, but she, he's also very much, you know, her, her, you know, she feels incredibly maternal towards him. I mean, she, she, it's her, he's her favorite. And um, and uh, so you know that brings out one side, and you know Buzz is our work, you know our work arm, and and then Provenza is, you know, I mean they're yeah, and they get frustrating and annoying, and then these guys are, you know, this is my muscle and this is my brain, and you know, I mean I really get really annoying. <laughs> She said annoying, and she went here, but I thought she meant here, so no. I thought I would clarify. No, no, I, you know, so yeah, I think it would, you know, but, but I think that's true. I think that's a really good way to look at it. Um, I think what Gabriel contributes uh, to Brenda is a different perspective. I think... Um, the favorite perspective? <laughs> yeah, the favorite <laughs> perspective. Um, I think, you know, like, like a lot of brilliant people, there's like a very thin line between like brilliance and insanity. And, and Brenda is brilliant in what she does, but what I feel like Gabriel brings to her sometimes is just another perspective, another angle to look at it from, which sometimes um, when she uh, takes, takes his advice and tries to look at it from that angle, she actually discovers something new there that he missed. So um, I think it's like I'm kind of like the prism. I think for Brenda, and she gets to shine her light through, and I get to project whatever it is that she needs at that moment. I really liked. I don't think this is working, is it? Okay, I'll take that one. And you're the tech guy. <laughs> they plan that. I am just an actor like you. <laughs> I play a techie. Um, I think for me, it's it's maybe a little more accessible way in for some of the audience members because I am among you, but not of you, because I am not a detective, I'm not an officer, so still a civilian, but working in this world. So that's, I think, what he brings to, to the show. <coughs> um. <laughs> well... Uh, to be honest with you, I, uh, uh, the second the question comes out, everybody up here goes, holy mother of God. What <laughs> and while I was thinking about what on God's earth I could say about what, where I fit, et cetera, I'm looking at this shirt. And uh, as Tony, what I just point out to you, I have four spare buttons down here. <laughs> I've worn this shirt for two years. I'd never had any idea. <laughs> I'm just saying. Somehow I see this so showing up in an that's, episode. <laughs> that's pretty much what happens on the set. I look around. And <laughs> they all talk a lot, and I scratch and look at my shirt. <laughs> He's also the bureaucratic infighter. He understands how she goes to him for that. He's the he knows how the department works inside and out, and he knows the the. <laughs> go ahead, just let him save go this. Ahead. Come on, it's fine. They get it. They know they're actors. Go ahead. I have to follow that now. Okay. How many extra buttons do you have? Uh, unfortunately, I only have one extra button. Does it have food on it? Really and does. this was gift. This is a gift to me. This shirt, and it was told it was very expensive, and I only have one extra button. All right. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll just sew some extra buttons on there so I feel better about it. But uh, um, I, I don't know. There's so many things I could say. I just one is that I really enjoy the opportunity to, to portray a hero. You know, we're all heroes, every one of us. Uh, the people who do this work. I mean, we very we have very fortunate lives in, in the characters we play because our characters exist between the words action and cut. Um, whereas the real people, there is no action and cut. They just, they're out there all the time doing, doing this stuff and, you know, braving the, the elements and, and, and society. And uh, so I really love the opportunity that we get to do to play these kind of guys. And uh, for my particular character, I just think that, <clears throat> I mean, I love the, the, the relationship that GW and I have. 
They get to go to different places, I mean, you know, comedically and dramatically, uh, which is wonderful as an actor. You, you know, you can go all different places. But I think that, um, I forgot what I was going to say. I, uh, it's really good so far, though. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> even, even with one button. Me some more. <laughs> I think that the one thing about my character that I like the most is I've always thought that you know, it's really interesting to play characters who, uh, who live on the code where the ends justify the means. Whereas with Flynn, it's like he's fighting that all the time because the ends necessarily might be you know, illegal, un, uh, not, not, not the way to go. So he's fighting that and trying to keep, um, you know, trying to keep within the, the confines of whatever the law is. And I love that, because it's, you know, you, there's a lot of times I would think, you know, I've played my fair share of gangsters and stuff like that, and, and you just don't, you know, I won't mention the name of the show. Oh, and, <laughs> I don't know how many people you saw that show that I was on years ago, but anyway. Uh, don't say it, Tony, don't say but it. I won't say it. Uh, but anyway, so that, I get an opportunity to do that, and that's wonderful, because the writing is really great, and I get a chance to work with all these lovely people, Kira, everybody. And, um, you know, it's wonderful. I just, I don't, I hate to just like slobber up here and saying it's wonderful, it's wonderful, but it's wonderful. <laughs> Got one, thanks. Okay, so we've already established that I bring the annoyance. <laughs> um, but I think that also Captain Reader brings A, another woman to Brenda, another woman in power. And that's part of what I love so much because I experience that in the world when there's another woman in power in the room, I have a different world view that starts to get activated. And I think that things happen between us chemically just because of that. I also think that by the nature of my job, I bring the rules. I bring the law into the the room, and I bring an insistence on the truth of situations that would normally um, be overlooked because there's a greater good being served. So it's a very interesting, complex um, navigation, and I think and hope, and it seems as if it's a lot of fun for us to have her pushing everyone's buttons that way. And I'm, I'm really thrilled to be a part of this particular group of brilliant, brilliant people. Aww. Oh, dear. Pass. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Serious? Oh no, he's no, he's the he does it all the time. Him, so. Yeah, well, I know. Yeah. Don't don't just don't pay attention. All right, I <laughs> <laughs> Minutia, I, I, words come 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 to mind. Uh, Kira said to me, "You're my minutia." And I went, "Oh, cool. What's that? What's that mean?" <laughs> and then it made, made perfect sense. Um, the other word was staccato and um, offbeat. Because um, I see this as a, as a band, and, and she's the lead singer. And because I used to play in a lot of bands with really good lead singers, and I knew where my place was. And every once in a while, come in with a little solo, <laughs> and then back out and let her, and let her rock. <laughs> Ray, Raymond didn't want to speak for himself. Uh, I will relate to the makeup and hair trailer. Uh, his nickname in there is. Evil. <laughs> He's not, though, and that's crazy. He's a really, really strong, talented, wonderful actor, and he brings the muscle and a lot of times the heart. Uh, it's very interesting to see, and like I, and the humor. Like he can be very like tonight. He's I, you know, stretching, but I didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> he says he's yoga, but I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, so awesome, awesome. He knows how to do it. So to continue to the lead singer analogy, I mean, I think it's fair to say that this has really been a trailblazing role as a lead singer, that, you know, not just for female-led procedurals, but really, you know, bringing incredible talent to TV roles. Um, Kira, can you talk a little bit about that? What made you sign on for this role and how this role has impacted you? Um, I, you know, I, I signed on 
to it because I thought it was an incredible part. Um, it's hard, you know, as a as an actor because you and signing on to a series, you sign for six years <laughs> based on one script. So it's really kind of overwhelming. And I, but I loved the piece. I'm, you know, uh, I didn't want to see it for a really long time because I didn't want to, you know, think about the idea of actually trans you know, living here in, in LA for six months out of the year when my family was back east. But when I finally did read it, it became undeniably exciting for me to consider it. And then when I spoke to James and I spoke to Mike and Greer, who I don't think are here tonight, um, they were such an amazingly um, um, creative group of people who really wanted to include me from the beginning and it was very collaborative and there wasn't a dud in the bunch, you know, I always say about the three of them, they were just so wonderful. And and James had so many exciting things in, in store for her and I just felt like I heard her voice, I knew who she was, it was like I felt so compelled to do it. Um, as far as, you know, other actresses signing on, I mean, I think the great news is that we've been successful and in Hollywood, you know, you need to make money for people in order to have more, um, you know, freedom. And I think it's wonderful and it makes me feel so good. I don't know that I can take the credit, but I feel so incredibly great that other actresses, um, are getting great roles. If, if I had anything to do with that, that is just a, that I could I could pretty much die at this point. I think that would be, <laughs> and uh, but seriously though, I mean it's an absolutely wonderful thing to a legacy. You know, if it's if it's at all true, and I just think that you know, um, there are so many amazing actresses out there over forty and forty who you know are are, you know, out there, and, and it's hard. And I love the idea that that this might have made it better. So anyway, but it was like it was just a great role from the beginning. So hard to believe, isn't it, that that casting uh, a, a a woman, a middle-aged woman, actually very, she was younger than that. Almost, I, I, I was I thirty-nine thought, when we started. All right, all right. <laughs> but that 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 was considered 70? daring at the time is kind of shocking, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's like shocking that that was like, oh, God, that's a big risk. <laughs> It's a big risk going with Kira Sedgwick, That's what, but it was not a risk at all. Can't imagine anybody else playing the part. I'd like to talk a little bit about how you created the character. You know, who did you base her on, and how important are all the sort of things around her, like her black bag and her candy drawer and that sweater, <laughs> and her, especially her <laughs> the sweater, and her wardrobe. Like, how much of all of that goes into creating Brenda? Is that me? Sure. Oh, God. Um, um, you know, it, it, I mean, I, I feel like all of those things, um, uh, you know, sort of were, were, were ultimately in the, in, the, in the script. I mean, they were in the, in the pilot. Um, I think that I really uh, capitalized on all those great ideas that were there. Um, there was a moment at the end where she grabs the ding dong and that's like her drink at the end of the night. And, you know, she lays down on the bed and she eats it. And it's just, it was just, I really connected to that idea of, quietly, privately, secretly eating your chocolate and eating your sweets. And you know, that becomes the release for you. And I I just think that the idea, I mean, Amer Americans, women, you know, w w everybody has a feeling when they think about, ooh, dessert, you know, that thing. And so what, let's talk about, let's see how how someone deals with, you know, being a closet, basically sugar addict, and you know, what, and it's so relatable. I mean, I felt really strongly that, you know, if I was going to do TV, like they, this really had to be someone that you related to, and I think you can relate to all of these characters. You see yourself in these characters. That's why people come back week after week. I know the crimes are great, but it's also it's mostly the characters, right? I mean, you know, of course. So, um, and you know, the bag was something that we, you know, capitalized on, and you know, falling into the bag. And, and, the, and, you know, Greg Lavoie was so amazing with the costumes right away. I mean, I really wanted to show her as being this fish out of water. I mean, that's how she was written. And so let's really, you know, embrace the idea that she dresses like a Southern girl, you know, and she's got all of her, you know, her cashmere sweater sets and her one, ca you know, comfy cashmere and the flowy skirts and, you know, let's not put her in her suit. Let's make her, you know, feminine and, and very 
and terrifying. You know, she's feminine, but she also, and she's incredibly fragile, but she's also incredibly strong. And she's in this amazingly strong job. And she's a woman, a powerful woman who's not apologizing for her power. So anyway, I think I could go on and on, but I'll stop there. I know, but that bag. <laughs> you can buy I, that bag on QVC. I think, I think Raymond should uh, elaborate on the bag a little. Do you want to talk about the bag, Ray? Oh, <laughs> it's actually an interesting segue into another thing I was thinking about, too. So as we all know, this is going to be the last season. One. So what's the one thing you're all going to take home? Who's getting the black bag? <laughs> uh, well, I think I, the black bag, I know uh, there's dibs on that already. Uh, uh, I don't know what, what people are going to take home. I, I, I don't think the closer ends exactly. I mean, it ends. I mean, we'll stop making it. Uh, I, I'm going to take home the experience of having worked with so many wonderful people. Um, I mean, Rick Wallace, who directed tonight's episode, uh, my partner, Mike Robin and Greer Shepard, uh, the actress here, J.K. Simmons, by the way, would have been here tonight, except it was his son's last day at camp, and they were doing a musical recital, and he said he just couldn't miss it. Uh, those children. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and so what I'm going, to take, I'm going to take away having had the opportunity to do my best with a bunch of people who also were trying to do their best and, uh, and, and knowing that I tried to make the most of it while I was doing it. And that to me, I, you don't get that opportunity every day. And I had seven years of it. And it was awesome and wonderful. And one last thing, and that is that... Uh, I, I wouldn't have even been in this business if it hadn't been for G.W. Bailey, uh, who was my teacher in high school, and who con who convinced me to... What kind of student was he? True, he taught me acting, and I ended up as a writer. <laughs> but But... But uh, but I got I got a chance to. He convinced me that I I should I should try and do something that I wanted to do instead of what my parents wanted me to do, and and it really worked out for me. So I I'm I'm very glad I was able to spend the last seven years with him too. Aww. DW, anything you want to add to that? To quote Raymond Cruz, no. <laughs> I will say this, I, I, I think that's a very good question. Actually, what are we gonna take with us? Um, I did do a show many years ago that I can talk about. It was called MASH, and I did the last three years of it. And by the time we finished the very last episode, it was stripped. You would not believe it. Every time they worked, the next morning they come in, something else had been stolen overnight. <laughs> I mean, it was bare as it could be. Uh, I personally will take uh, the bobblehead on my desk. That's it. Uh, I'm going to steal it in a couple of weeks so that nobody else steals it. <laughs> but I assure you, by, we, uh, by December 21st, you come onto the murder room, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like uh, a bomb went off. There won't be a thing there. <laughs> Which, which tells you everybody wants a, a little piece of that. They want, they want to look at every day for the rest of their lives. Kind of like a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tile from the old electronics room. <laughs> Anyone else going to take any souvenirs, emotional or otherwise? Tony Great. will take every picture of himself that's on the set. <laughs> He brought the ball anyway, so. <laughs> Raymond, would you be taking anything? Crime Story. That was the series <laughs> I was on. Crime Story. <laughs> no, GW, come back. Wait. Come back. Wait. <laughs> See, they applauded. They applauded. They know the show. Yeah. They did. But eight people here who saw it. And they told eight people, and they told eight people. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what can you tell us? <laughs> I've lost control already. But so what can, <laughs> I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. What can you tell us about the last season? Did you set up the Terrell Baylor case knowing that it was going to come back? Well, I, I did. I, I've set up several cases. In the first season, I set up a case that could have come back like the Terrell Baylor case because I knew how I wanted to end the show, and I thought, well, if I only have one season, I'll do it this way. Um, and so I... I added them. I added to them. I, those, those episodes multiplied uh, because the show kept going on. And, and, uh, but I always left myself uh, a space where she was doing something that was legally ambiguous and morally dubious. Yeah. And wow. I, I, I didn't think it was morally dubious. Yes, you did. Uh, <laughs> Actually, she keeps forgetting that she's not Brenda Lee Johnson. <laughs> she's going to get herself killed trying to arrest somebody. I know. It's like you've got to stop telling people what to do. But she... she uh, but uh, uh, I, I, always, I always knew that I was... I always knew how I was going to end the show. I always knew... I knew from when I wrote the pilot what the last three words were going to be. And I'm going to get a chance to do that because Kira was gracious enough to let us know that she, you know, she's done this role for seven years. It's a very long time to play a part, and it's a big part, and it takes a lot of time to learn all that dialogue and to to really get it all done. And so, um, so I was prepared. I I thought she might be ready. And so to leave, you know, if. If you're married to Kevin Bacon, you might want to be sleeping with him. And, Good rule. I mean, it's just a thought I throw out there. And, That's uh, really good. <laughs> I'm so impressed with everyone tonight. Aren't they doing great? And, and uh, so, yeah. Uh, and, and, and we have been building towards the, the, uh, the loss part of love. I mean, we're thematically, this season is about love and about what love means. And, and I always think of loss as the opposite end of that string because that's the only promise love ever makes to you is that it will one day end. And yet we go on loving anyway. And I think that is a triumph uh, in a way of the human heart. That's what makes us human, that we love anyway. And going all the way to the end, loving anyway, every step of the way is how we'll finish this, I think. And I think that's the, I think that's my answer. I taught him every bit of that. <laughs> he will take credit for it. So speaking of the buddy comedy that's going on in the back row over there, was there ever an idea for a spinoff with the two of them? Yeah, we did that. And, and our, you know, our partners at TNT are great partners. And I wish everybody the opportunity to work with such a supportive network. Uh, you don't always find that out there. And, and they, did a, they have been very supportive and great, great partners throughout this whole process. Um, but they didn't want to. We, we did the spinoff, and they thought it was uh, uh, too dark. And uh, it, you know, I I I, uh, I I don't I don't have any more to say about that. We are doing you know major crimes. If major crimes uh, uh, hits the air, will be a spinoff. That is technically a spinoff. Uh, I think it is contractually a spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, how do you feel about that? Uh, I hope it spins off. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah. yeah. Will we get to know more of Captain Raider's backstory? Yes, I, I, you will. You'll get to know as as you as you see. You got to know more about Michael Paul Chan in this episode. In yeah. the next episode, you'll get to know more about uh, Gabriel. And in the episode after that, you'll get to know more about Raymond. And in the episode after that, you get to know more about Raider. And the the season is designed that way, sort of to let. I mean, I always think of it as a concerto with her playing the, 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 the melody and other people coming up for their solo within that. And, and that's sort of, because I think musically, more, in a more classical way, I guess. And, and uh, you will get to know more about Raider's backstory as we go along, but I don't want to give it away. 
You don't want to know now, anyway. We won't tell anybody. One thing I'd like to say is that uh, as an actor uh, in this business, I'm also a fan of this business. So um, it was really great when I, you know, I got on The Closer because I really, I really liked Kira's work. I, I, th I saw this movie Phenomenon and I thought, oh my God, she's wonderful. And so I get a chance to work with her, and it's great. And then all of a sudden, now Mary McDonald comes around. And I was just telling Mary the other day that, I mean, I, I, every, I can't watch it because I get choked up, you know, uh, Dances with Wolves. And, and, you know, and I was thinking, oh, my God, it's so great to be working with her. And Sneakers and all the other movies. But, you know, like when the Indian at the end is, like, shouting that he's the friend of, you know, Kevin. Like, I just start sobbing. And she, we were talking about the other day. So I feel, you know, blessed to be able to have this opportunity to work with, especially with these guys, and JK, who's not here, and, and this guy. And, uh, uh, but actually, no. He cried at Transformers, too. So. Yes. <laughs> actually, actually, I saw him cry at a Honda commercial. <laughs> OK. I cry when I look at crime stories. Only because he couldn't get on long. <laughs> All right, John. I'm now feeling defensive about Dances with Wolves, so. Mi hinginaki wexuya chana chante. All right, I'm impressed. And the other thing I'll just say is that I've known James for almost 15 years now, James and Philip, and, and I remember talking to James early on about you know, how wonderful his writing is. And I said to him, I said, you know, one of these days, I said, I really would love to do something that you write. I said, because your stuff is like really brilliant. Well, it's really good. I won't say brilliant, because then, then, but no, but really, and. Uh, you can say so, brilliant. Okay, it, was, it is, it is brilliant. And I get the opportunity to do that. And it only happened one other time before with this writer, producer, David Burke, who I loved his work and words. And uh, James is just amazing. I mean, it's just, I never thought I'd get the opportunity to do stuff like that again. And now I'm getting it for seven years and hopefully uh, seven more. Anyway, that's it. I, okay, that's enough of a love letter to you, right, James? <laughs> I'd love to hear about everyone's audition process a little bit, how you each got cast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, actually, you know, it's John, John and Corey have really interesting stories along the, those lines, I think. Corey's, Corey's story is pretty remarkable, actually. I, uh, I, I, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if I need this. I, I'm pretty loud. I'm trying to um, but I, uh, I went in, and um, this was like the. I had just come out to LA, and this was, I think, the fifth pilot that I tested for in '04. Uh, and um, when I got the script for this one, I, I knew it was. I had read so many that I really knew that there was something really special about this one, and then with Kira being attached as well. I mean, I remember telling everyone when we were shooting the pilot, this was like a no-brainer. Like, But everyone was like, no, don't say that, because lots of good shows don't get picked up, so you just have to keep your fingers crossed. But I kind of was the one the whole time saying, you guys, this is going to happen. And he was annoying. Bro. Right, I was the annoying one then. I was the young, this was my first pilot. It's my first series that, you know, that I ever booked, so I was the kid who didn't know anything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's great. Just hit your mark. <laughs> but I went in and I auditioned, and I was the only, um, the only minority actor to be testing for the part. And um, I remember thinking to myself as I was looking at these other like good-looking like white dudes with five o'clock shadows. And, uh, I was like, oh man, I, <laughs> this isn't gonna go well. <laughs> I did, you know. I was like, oh, I don't know how this is gonna go. Uh, but I went into the room. And um, you know, I was greeted, with, you know, with Kira and James and and, uh, and and Peter Roth and Mike Robin, and you know, I read and um, I thought I did a good job, but I was still kind of nervous. And I like read and I left and I went home and I got home and my manager called and he was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I was like, "I'm sitting at home waiting for you to call." <laughs> you know, and he's like, you know, well, um, they 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 want you to come back. Can you go back and do it again? And I was just like, oh. My God. <laughs> So I went back across the hill and um, I walked in and Mike Robin came out front and he greeted me and he said, you know, we like everything you're doing, uh, but can you make this character a little more, and I literally finished his sentence, I said, charming, and he said, bingo, that's it. So I came back in and threw on the charm. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's how things went. But if I could just say one thing about that, um, it takes a really open-minded 
group of people to get to the casting, testing phase for a show where you've got everything mapped out and you see this picture in your head of everything you want and to get to that point and to all of a sudden think outside of the box yeah. and think, all right, well, this doesn't exactly fit the, you know, the image that we had in our head, but this is the actor we like. Let's make it happen. Let's make it be reflective of the diversity of Los Angeles. I think that's really one thing that's really and a, a real true testament to our creative our creative engines behind our show is that they really tried to create a reflection of reality. That's where the humor comes from. Life isn't all drama all the time. There's got to be some humor there. So we try to have an accurate reflection of what, what, what we as people see. And uh, I just want to take a moment to say thank you guys for thinking outside of the box because a lot of people would have gotten to that crossroads and decided to take a left instead of a right just because that's what they had in mind. And so that's... That's actually really a really, 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 really great thing to have uh, at that level. So thank you. Well, he's the best actor. <laughs> uh, Robert, Robert's audition process was really good too, and he's not here tonight, and and he would have told you about it at length. But uh, but I, I can I can shorthand he 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 auditioned, and you know what these auditions for the network can be like. They are intense and difficult. It's like we who are about to die salute you. And I always <laughs> feel terribly sorry for the actors. And Robert came in. We had one guy on tape, and Robert came in and read. And they decided in the room right then and there to cast him. And he was still in the hallway. And they said, well, why don't we tell him before he gets out so he doesn't have to wait? all the way home. That's the kind of people we were working with. And so we went out, we ran out in the hallway and we said, hey, you got the part. And he was so amazingly uh, overwhelmed. And, and he has been a, he's also, uh, you know, one of the most grateful people you could ever work with. He comes into work, he is very happy to be there. And it, it shows, of course, uh, in, in his work. And, and the audition process was pretty amazing for everybody. Well, not everybody had to audition. Actually, but but the audition process was really amazing for for most of it. John Tinney didn't even I don't even think you read the part you actually ended up playing until the very end. Yeah, um, no, I, well, I came in. I I was I was one of the guys with the five o'clock shadow. <laughs> being there. I knew I seen you last I was, uh, <laughs> No, that's why I came in. I've told this story before, but yeah, I came in for the role of Gabriel, and I when I remember when I read the script and they said uh, I was reading Gabriel and I thought well this is a great script I said I, I really kind of don't think I think you want to go with somebody one a little younger than Gabriel I can't think he you know he's got to be a little younger a little blacker <laughs> and I said and they said well no we're thinking of having this be like the love interest no and I'm like well I don't really you really want to have a love interest like in the in the squad room that doesn't seem to make sense and I'm, and so I was sort of talking myself out of it and I said but you know there is this one role you know it's only one scene in the pilot but and you know, this FBI guy that she meets and knew it from the past. And and uh, I guess when you wrote that part, you were like, this is like a, this is a day player one, but well, never going to see I, the character I, again. I didn't, I didn't necessarily know if we would see the character again. I did think like it was a chance for a romantic lead, but uh, when they were reading it and they, 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 they wanted to see everybody. And when John came in to read and he left, they went, wow. And I said, "Yeah, it's pretty good." But I only read Gabriel. No, no, you read. You there, read. There was no, the, oh, I read that yeah, little yeah, time. Yes. That's right. I read that little. And so we, little so we went, right. and and uh, and they said, "Wow." And I said, "Yeah," but we don't. You know, it's a series regular if you want that. And they're like, "Wow," <laughs> and I said, uh, "I don't have it in the budget." <laughs> 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 I, I I was like I. I don't have it, but you can have him. He's, he's, there he is. He's available. And they were like, okay, all right. We, we, and it was, it was one of those I was things. Sitting, thinking outside the box. That was really yes. great. I mean, yes. changing midstream. I mean, oh, late, late in the stream. Oh my God. Very late in the that stream. Was really, yeah. It was like, thank was you like, for that. Oh no, it was wonderful. It was a, it, I thought I talked myself into like, you know, a seven line No, no, role. you were, it was an amazing, uh, it was a great thought and, and they proved to be very amazing and very fluid when it, when uh, when it came to selecting the actors and our partners, uh, our creative partners uh, at Warner Brothers, at Time Warner, you know, Time Warner is 50 divisions, and we can talk at some other time about how they imperfectly cohere. <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> 
but but uh, uh, our creative partners at at the studio are also r really wonderful and terrific. Peter Roth and and uh, Odetta Watkins, and in addition to uh, Sam and David and and Michael and Lilla at TNT, they all very supportive of all the actors and and of all the writers and Mike Burcham and Detective, yeah. and Detective Mike Detective Mike Burcham who we all. What's life like on the set? Is there someone who's the prankster? And I'm almost afraid to ask this question. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking John's at somebody who's funny. not making eye contact. John's the funniest. He, he tries not to act like he's funny, but I kind of have to stay away from him on the set because we we've been separate. We've been separated. Yeah, yeah. they separated. Tears <laughs> rolling down their face. Tears, like uh, absolutely uh, crying, like hysterically video. crying, like, laughing. Hey, hey, Corey, come here. I, I want to show you something. And I'll be like, get over there. He's like, just stay away from John. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very I, funny guy. GW is also very, very funny. These two together. And, and charming. <laughs> I concur. John is hilarious. Yeah. I mean, yeah. one of the greatest joke tellers ever. Yeah. And uh, yeah. GW is one of the greatest storytellers ever. Yeah. And between the two of them, I mean, really, literally, there's, he just told the story today we were filming. <laughs> and it's just like you came out of the car laughing. We had to do the take again. Cause <laughs> it's just. It's just really great. It's great. You're a good audience, Tony. You laugh a lot and cry a lot when you laugh. It's very funny. It's very good. Raymond is very funny too. I know he's he's I don't know he's he is being steely tonight, but he's he's honestly you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Yeah, he walks on the set and everybody just breaks. <laughs> Yeah, I will tell. I will. This is this is sort of out of school, but but this is G W and Tony and their sort of their relationship in Raymond. Uh, early on, you know, it's sad. I mean, I met Tony uh, with his first wife, and he, I mean, his second wife, I guess. And he he split up. That's uh, another story for later. Never mind. Your next wife. I played mahjong with her. I don't know. Anyway, so so. Uh, they they got a divorce. Uh, I don't know. She flipped out, and they got a divorce. And and uh, uh, refused, and Tony started. She refused to watch reruns of Crime Story. <laughs> That's what I mean. She just gave up. Anyway, so Tony was Tony was aggressively dating. Let's just say. Let's just put it that way. And and uh, so he was he was you know tried to meet people. And GW came in late. This isn't out of school, right? Yeah, this is not out of school. It's what out of happened? school, but it's very funny. It is a funny line. What happened was uh, he, he came late to the set one time. And, and Ray, Ray and, said. Yeah, so they said, you should say something to GW. He's always like, you know, picking on you. And I said, no, no, I, I, you don't understand. If I say something, he'll come back with a one-liner that'll destroy me. So, but I did it anyway. I said, all right. Hey, you know, uh, we've been waiting for a long time. He goes, oh, I'm so sorry. He goes, there was a dead girl in the hallway, and I was trying to get her number from her for a date. <laughs> I looked at the crew and I said, you see? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, the scene was in a morgue. There was a dead girl. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on that note, I'm so sorry to say we have to end things there. This is, I know, this has been a fantastic night. Thank you so much to all of you guys for coming. Thank, Thank you so you much guys. for coming, really. And staying.